All right, 913 is the time. We're back. A big thanks to Chris Long for filling in for Chris Eggert today. And it wouldn't be right to have you here if we didn't talk a little sports. Right in my wheelhouse. If I can't handle that, you no reason to bring me <laughs> in the first place. To come back. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much going on right now. I mean, I love that the Timberwolves are in the playoffs, right? Yep. They've got a big game tonight, game one. Yep. That's exciting. Not, not tonight. Uh, Sunday. Oh, tomorrow night. Sunday. Oh. I thought we had to... Sorry, tomorrow. It is tomorrow. Yeah, it's tomorrow. Tomorrow. Sorry, tomorrow. my bad. Tonight... I thought <laughs> that was me having the wrong day in Sorry. my head, not You're knowing like, their what schedule. What day is it? And yes. then tonight is the Twins. Last night, the Wild finished up their season. This is what happens when we get in one of these sports yeah, crossroads so seasons. It all gets a little weird. Uh, the Wild, they went down swinging. You got to give them credit. They didn't tank. Uh, they sprinted to the finish line, lost last night in the season finale to Seattle, ending what has been a, a difficult season. But if you want to give them some excuses, you certainly can. I mean, they had injuries they had to deal with all year. The good news looking forward, next year, you may have heard, even if you're not a big hockey fan, about the salary cap trouble that they've been having ever since they cut Ryan Suter uh, and Zach Parisi. They've been dealing with, they're still on the hook for paying those guys, and that money counts against the salary cap what they can pay other players, and it's a lot. So they're kind of running with a parachute on their back. They haven't yeah. had as much money to spend on players. It's affected the amount of depth they've had. They haven't been able to bring in as many free agents. Last year is the last year they have to deal with that. Then they get out of jail. The hope right. is that a lot of the younger guys that had pretty good years this year. Kirill Kaprizov has become a superstar. Yeah. Matt Boldy had a good rookie year last year, took another step. Marco Rossi was a rookie this year. He was very good. Brock Faber, kid from Maple Grove, came in as a rookie defenseman and is one of already the best defensemen in the entire NHL. Wow. He's going to finish second in the Rookie of the Year voting. There is reason for optimism. I'm not picking them to win the Stanley Cup next year. They might be able to get back into the playoffs next year, and then the year after that, that will be the springboard year that they'll really be able to start doing stuff. Okay. Well, they're still fun to watch either way, and they just re-signed Mark andre Fleury to another year. That's, so that's huge. Kind of, yeah. You've got a Hall of Famer, one more year to watch him play, and selfishly for us, he's an incredible interview. He's a great guy. You may have seen some of the pranks he plays on teammates and opponents. Um, Was he the one that TP'd someone's car he, and then the wheels Well, came they off, TP'd or? his car. Okay. And then when they went to Colorado, he got them back with the dirt on the hood and took the tires off. And he is the Hall of Fame goalie, maybe even better prankster. Expensive pranks, yeah, too. Yeah, well, you can, you can do that at that level. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the, uh, the Wolves playoff game. So they start tomorrow. First time in 20 years the Timberwolves have home court advantage in a postseason series. They usually get, if they get into the playoffs, they get in as the sixth seed, the seventh seed, the eighth seed. Well, this time they're the three seed. Which is almost kind of a bummer, Megan, because they were the one seed most of the year. They kind of slipped a yeah. little down the stretch, but whatever. They still get in. Haven't won a playoff series since back then. Now, here's the hard part. They're playing the Phoenix Suns. This was the regular season finale. And, oh, just watch Phoenix's score balloon as we go through this highlight. They haven't beaten Phoenix at all this year, and they haven't even been within single digits in the second oh, half no. of any of the games. It's like one of those prior performances, no guarantee of future results. They're hoping... This is the best Timberwolves team in 20 years. It is not a good matchup for them. Uh, if you believe in odds in Vegas, they've got Phoenix and the Wolves, despite the fact the Wolves are the three seed and Phoenix is the six. The, the odds makers are saying it's dead even. As a viewer, that means it should be a lot of fun. It's going to be absolutely electric at Target Center. And uh, it's just good to see they are definitely trending upward for the first time, significantly upward for the first time in Two decades. Can I ask how far you see them making it in the series? I, the good news is if they beat Phoenix, they're going to play defending champ Denver, most likely in the second round. They match up okay with Denver. I mean, Denver's the defending world champs, but I think if they can get past Phoenix, they could make a historically deep run. I'll say it that way. All right. Well, that'll be fun to watch <laughs> yes. on Saturday. Yes. Uh, so much talk about Caitlin Clark. She's been so much fun for the, the, the game of women's basketball. I mean, she has just really electrified things and, 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 and the, the viewing and the, the young girls. I mean, you're a dad of two young girls who play sports. And I mean, for them, this has got to be huge. They're watching her. Yeah. And, and they got to know her and they kind of got more into basketball than they've ever been. My girls did because of watching so much. Uh, women's college basketball and that's the thing and Caitlin Clark would be the first person and has been the first person to say it it hasn't really just been about her if she was the 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 lamp that brought everybody that drew everybody in mm -hmm. and people started to watch women's college basketball this year and realized it's a really good sport to watch there are a lot of sports I say if you watch pro tennis I think the women's game right now is way more fun to watch than the men's game you just have to start watching it to see it it's yeah. just a more exciting uh, pure brand of the game. But don't get me wrong, I do love watching the NBA men's college basketball, but 
it's, it is a different sport, and it's a little more of a chess game. There's more coaching. There's more strategy. Uh, and then when you see Caitlin shooting 40-foot three-pointers, that's yeah. kind of – you just don't see that. So lot. she signed with Indiana? Signed with Indiana. They sold out their season tickets like, like that. that. Um, it's kind of funny. Her, her boyfriend uh, used to go to Iowa – works for the Indiana Pacers. Oh, so when she declared she was going to come out of college and go to the WNBA draft, we already knew that Indiana had that first pick. It yep. was a no-brainer. It's a great situation for her. And uh, I know I've got family in Indiana, and they cannot wait to watch her play. All right, let's talk about the draft, the NFL draft. It's coming up. Uh, what do the Vikings do? Kirk Cousins is in Georgia now. Now what? They're going to hope they can trade up. They have picks 11, and they have another one in the 20s. If you sit at 11, you're not going to get one of the – quote-unquote, top four quarterbacks in this draft. That guy, J.J. McCarthy from yep. Michigan, they won a national championship. He's, depending on who you ask, he's in the top four, if not the fourth. A lot of what we're hearing is the Vikings like him. The, the, the top two guys they're not going to have a chance to get. The third guy is a guy named Drake May out of North Carolina. He or J.J. McCarthy are the guys that the Vikings could probably trade up to get. The problem is you've got to be able to offer enough to a team that's sitting up at the fourth pick, the fifth mm. pick, the sixth pick, but to make that trade. trade you. Yeah. That may or may not happen. If they have to stay at 11 where they sit, there are a couple of other players, uh, a guy named Bo Nix, another guy named Michael Penix. Very good quarterbacks. Some people think those guys could be the sleepers of this draft. So if you're a Viking fan, exciting if they trade up. Don't freak out if it gets past the 4, 5, 6 pick and they have to wait till 11. There's still some guys that I and some people think might be just fine at 11. Trust well, me. Oh, Okay. <laughs> But I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. I'm glad that's Kwesi Adolfo Mensa's. The, tr <laughs> tr the draft is always exciting and fun. And the reason it's not being announced now, if there's a trade, there could be a deal agreed upon. There'd be no reason for that team that made the trade or the Vikings to announce it ahead of time, helping everybody else reset and say, okay, oh. the Vikings are now at five. That means they'll take this person and then reach. Gotcha. Chess, chess game also. Yep. So you wait, you announce it the moment the pick happens. That makes it difficult for everybody else. All right. Professional Women's Hockey League. Playoffs happening. Yep. They're going for the big trophy. They're coming up. They've still got a couple more regular season games there in Montreal last night also. I kind of like the wild. Good game, but a heartbreaker as it turned out. Uh, they're set in second place, PWHL Minnesota are, and this game kind of hurt Montreal creeping up on them in the standings. But uh, a couple Minnesotans, uh, some Minnesota natives, some former Gophers, uh, played in the Women's World Championship last week. They made it to an incredible gold medal game against Canada. This game was one of the best women's hockey games. Speaking of women's sports, they're a lot of fun to watch. Yes. Uh, Canada ended up winning in overtime. Just an incredible 6-5 game. And, again, five players from uh, PWHL Minnesota and two more that actually have ties to the state. Very heavy Minnesota presence on that silver medal team. So they're now back with the PWHL team making that push for the postseason. It's nice to see women's sports doing so well because it is bringing more people into the realm. And I love that because you're right. It, all you have to do is sit down and watch a game and you're going to be hooked. That, if you watch that USA-Canada game, even if you weren't a, a hockey fan, yeah. you were going to be enthralled by the level of play in that game. Impressive. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you.